up guys? Today on Dirt Lifestyle, we're gonna build our own jack stands. I love little projects like this. I like building things that are purpose built. I have a purpose. I've got a project coming up in the near future where I'm gonna need a second and third hand. And to be completely honest, I've had a number of projects in the past where I could have used a second and third hand. So I'm gonna build some super tall jack stands today. And these are gonna be engineered to hold up the weight of a vehicle. But if you are watching this video, hoping that you could get some tips and tricks on how to build jack stands to hold up the weight of the vehicle, um, there's definitely gonna be lots of little nuggets of info in here that can help you do that. One thing that I would advise, Maybe draw something up. If, if you're gonna want your life to depend on whatever you build, you can draw something up, you can send it to an engineer, um, get a mechanical engineer to just sign off on it. Say, hey, if you change the angle of this, or if you change the material thickness of that, they might be able to point you in the right direction and make sure that you're staying safe. I don't want you to think that this is a template to build something that can hold up whatever the heck you want. This is basically intended to be a video that will spawn a little creativity and make it to where you wanna get out in the shop and build something. The material type of choice that we're gonna to use today is square tube. I chose square tube for this job because I don't want the stuff I build to rotate. And this is gonna make it very simple to make uniform holes as we drill. Um, the different pieces of square tube are gonna fit into one another. And this is definitely gonna speed up this process. Another thing that's gonna speed up this process is a new toy I just got. As you can see, there's not even hardly any dust on it. This thing is brand new, I haven't used it. Um, this is an Evolution Power Saw. I've heard of these, but I've never used one. Apparently, it cuts extremely fast. It's a steel disc instead of one of those abrasive discs, and I guess it leaves a really nice edge as well. So you're gonna see my honest first impressions with this. The company contacted me a couple weeks ago and wanted to send me one, so. I said what any of you would say, hell yeah, send me one. When you're designing your jack stands, you're gonna have two primary measurements that you're gonna be working with, your collapsed height and your extended height. The collapsed height is going to decide how the rest of the jack stand gets built. And in this case, my collapsed height is gonna be 32 inches. So the outer sleeve is gonna be about 28, 29, somewhere in that ballpark, because I wanna leave enough room on the top so I could have removable tops. I'm basically gonna make like a wedge style top and a couple different other shapes that are gonna accommodate the different tasks that I have in the future. As you can see, this is a very simple design. To lock these in place, I'm just gonna use a common truck trailer hitch pin. This one's off of my truck, so I'm gonna go buy some brand new ones, but I like hitch pins for this kind of thing because they're super common. If you lose one, you just go to Walmart or wherever, you spend a few dollars and you get a new one. And it's definitely more than strong enough to hold up what we're gonna be doing with our jack stands. The reason that I wanted to drill these holes first is because the next step is gonna be putting some legs on this bad boy. And it's gonna be way easier to drill these holes before there's four legs put on these. So I'm looking at this thinking 12 inches seems appropriate. It's not super wide and it's not super narrow. Um, if I do 12 inches there, 12 inches there, that'll give us 26 inches across, which should be a very stable jack stand, even when this is put all the way up. However, if I wanna make it more stable, this is all being made out of square tube. I can slide another piece in there, and I mean, I could make this eight feet wide if I wanted to. Majority of the material that I'm using for this project is stuff that I've had laying around the shop for a while. And uh, this chunk of angle iron is no exception. I've had this laying around in here, I think since the last house I lived in. So they've been in here for like four plus years. And uh, I think that this will be more than strong enough. Angle iron is a nice strong shape. And what we're gonna do now is figure out how to make this cut here and that cut there. And we're just gonna use a speed square. I'm sure many of you have seen my other videos where I use speed squares. I use these a lot. I come from the construction trade and this is just a common tool out there. So this would be 90 degrees. And if we turn it, this is gonna be hard to do with one hand. <laughs> there we go. If we turn it that way, you can see right there, it says 30 degrees. So we're trying to equal 90. So 30 degrees here would equal a 60 degree cut right here. So if we turn this to where this guy says 60 degrees right there. So see how that says 60 degrees right there? Now, if you look straight up and down, we have got our cut. 
So this will be 60 degrees off the backbone of this. And this lower cut is gonna end up being 30 because like I said, we're trying to make 90. So we're gonna take and we're gonna turn this up to where that says 30 right there. And we're gonna cut all these at 30. We do have a little bit of a problem here. This only goes to like a 45 and it doesn't go to a 60. So that means that I'll be cutting half of these at 45 and then the other side is gonna be 30. And then I guess I'll have a 15 degree discrepancy. So I'll either have to fill it with weld or I'm gonna have to use a grinder and grind it. We'll just see what happens. So I just wanna be clear, I'll be cutting one side all at 45 degrees, cutting the other side all at 30 and we're just gonna roll the dice and see what we can do. quite enough material to finish all four of these, but I do have enough to finish two of them. And I'm pretty excited because as I've been working along here, I've been coming up with different ideas to just use scrap and make different tops that will mount onto these jack stands. So I'm gonna be drilling a hole through this inner sleeve and it'll make it to where I can fabricate different tops that I can just uh, bolt and unbolt depending on what the project is that I'm working on. So this is the first thing I came up with. I think this will work really good for um, axle housing or tube. If I wanna set this up on the end of the table and I need it to hold like a 20 foot stick of tube that's gonna be on the table, boom, I've got a different top that'll make it to where it'll work really well for that. Um, the only other one I'm gonna build tonight is I'm just basically gonna take this back to my press break and I'm gonna put a little bend here and a little bend there, probably 20 degrees on each side and it'll just kind of make it to where I can put something a little bit bigger than this would hold. Um, who knows? In the future, I'm probably gonna build a whole bunch of different tops for these, just based on whatever project I have at the time. So right now, I'm gonna weld up a bunch of these tops, and then I'm gonna start burning in these jack stands, and we can put them on the ground and see how they look. Now it's time to finish weld, then we can test these bad boys out. very easy, it was a very simple project, and uh, they seem pretty stable. I know it's gonna be hard to tell in the camera like some proportions, but here, I'll put the saw down at the bottom there so you can kind of see how big it is compared to a saw. Uh, this is as tall as it gets here, and that is as short as it gets over there. Now I do have a little bit of an issue on both of them, and I, I had a feeling that this was gonna be an issue. Um, I tried to weld real light here because I knew it was gonna distort the inside of that tube. So they are going past that on the inside of the tube, but it's a little rough. You gotta use a hammer a little bit in order to tap it all the way down. Um, but if I tap it from the bottom, it does come back out. So uh, I think it will eventually loosen up over time. It's not that big of a deal. And I did put a little bit of lube on the outside of this just to make it to where it slides back a little bit easier. But all in all, I'm happy. I think that these turned out great. Um, I'm really excited to get going on these future projects where I could use these jack stands. And uh, actually, next time I go to the steel yard, I need to get the rest of the material so I can build the other two. I didn't have enough to complete all four. So for now, I'm just gonna be using these two until the next time I make the trip. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and this gives you a little bit of inspiration to go and create some stuff yourself. There's lots of things you can build that will speed up your workflow or make it easier to build projects in the future. I think jack stands are a great example, but there's a ton of stuff like this. Build your own welding cart, build your own engine stand. There's all kinds of stuff you can build that will get you out of the house, get you creative, and you know simplify the way you build things in the future. If you like the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time. Start it up.